Hi guys, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. A lot of you guys keep saying, you watch my work and you say, he's not a plaster, he's using a swimming pool trowel. I said, show me some of your work that's already been painted. Well, here it is. Two months ago, they painted it. What do you think, guys? All right, we didn't do this, but since I'm already here doing some other work, I thought I'd uh, show you how to fix it. First thing, put on some glasses. Do you need a respirator? I, I use it because you never know what's in the stucco. It's got so many additives. You inhale that stuff, it'll beat you up. Do I need an electric tool to pull this off? Doubtful. Do I need a sludge hammer? No. But notice it does have a point. A claw hammer, I'd be here forever. And these two guys here, this one's like a toy. This one is like a tomahawk. You get some grip on it. What I need to do is get rid of this perimeter. Now, since Jay's over there, what I'm going to do is get rid of it. Get rid of it. Now, I'm, I'm not going to bore you guys and show you the whole thing of how to get rid of it. But what I am going to do is just get it started and show you guys. Just tap it, guys. Tap it. You guys, uh, you watch what we do. You get an idea. It just takes a little bit of practice, guys. A little bit of practice. Then when I get this uh, about where I want it, what, am, what else am I going to do? I'm going to put a bonding agent on it. Why? Because our cement plaster will not adhere to a painted surface. No way. Not, not more than a year anyway. Uh, so I'm going to get this all the way down. I'm going to hit with a bonding agent. Then I'm going to come back. I'll show you on film how I spread it out and float it to match this finish. Real simple. All right, guys. Now that we have that prepped properly, I'll take some mud, which is really stiff mud. You got stiff mud, guys. That's how to bring it back to life. Stiff mud, but now that I can't handle, hopefully. Okay, we take the mud. Now we're going to skim this. Now this particular mud that we're using, we're using it all the way around the house to do something extra. I'm just happened to be here and I saw this and I thought, whoa, that is, that's ugly. I can fix that. So what I'm doing is taking some stiff mud, putting it on. And I'm pushing hard. Why am I pushing hard, guys? Because the mud I'm putting on has got, it's heavier. It's, it's, it's real heavy sand. It's dry and heavy. But no matter what it is, you adapt to it. Big rocks, chuck them right out of there. Okay. You want to get this tight, guys. A lot of elbow grease, a lot of muscle. Compact it. And I'll show you how we, we float it. I'm going to show you just a little bit more. A little bit more mud right here in order to get the bottom right. Now, what kind of tool do we use to bring the aggregate out? What is aggregate? Aggregate, in this case, of stucco is sand. What is aggregate for concrete? Rocks. Okay, so we got it right where we want it. Now, if I were to use, say, a hard rubber float, a cork float, a plastic float, this is actually to bring a finish out, a worm finish. You put sand in it and brings, it makes worm finishes. You could use it for this, but we're not going to use that. Cork float. Uh, these are kind of useless, uh, like tits on a bore. They're, they're, they're garbage. I don't like them, but I uh, happen to have this on the truck for years. A hard rubber float. Hard rubber float compacts the stucco. If I do this, it's going to drag everywhere. I'll show you. Okay, it'll take the heavy sand that I'm using, and it'll drag. Say so like, you see this? Watch, when I start floating it with a hard rubber float, which compacts the, the brown coat, it's going to drag on the painted surface, and it's not going to match. It's, it's not what we want to do. You see that? You see them holes? It's creating holes and everything like that. Um, that is, that's not the finish we want, because this is designed for a different purpose. Uh, anyhow, what we want is a green sponge float. And a lot of guys don't use a red one. Red one is for brickwork, concrete. Red one will just make it super fine, fine, fine cement. You want the green. The green has bigger holes. We adapt this one, put it in water, get some water on there, guys. Get some water on there. OK, I'm going to show you how to fix this without looking. Kidding. All right. What we're going to do is do your joints first, guys. Get your joints. Feather these joints in, kind of half, half uh, Half right when I say I'm just kidding. This is simple, but it does take practice, guys. 
when you get things like this, uh, we call it a worm finish. When you get this, that just means the aggregate is hitting the wall. So with this float finish, you don't have that problem because actually we want to bring it out now. And when I say we want to bring out the aggregate, why? <laughs> That's a dash finish. So I can dash it. I can use Felton or Oli sand, or I can use this really heavy sand. Uh, and then just heavy floated, which a lot of water. The heavy sand, uh, it's got to be clean coarse washed to match this particular finish. And we go into it. We feather into it. And what happens if we don't have enough bonding agent? Well, the bonding agent went way around the perimeter. If we don't have enough bonding agent, then this comes off in about four years, the edges. So we don't want that. All right. There we go. And I can hit it one more time. It will be on the money, meaning I'm going to clean this float out, get, get all the aggregate out so it's not beating up my own work. And now I look at it and say, hmm, what do you guys see that I don't see? Okay, different view. Pull some of this aggregate up. Aggregate, again, is the sand that we added to the cement plaster. Feather it in and get it pretty. Now that matches a lot better than what we started with. This is a freebie because I'm here. They probably won't even notice it. But anyway, we like to pretty up, pretty up things, especially if we're here. Plus, this gives me an opportunity to show you guys how to fix it if you had a, a fly-by-night guy out. Or if the homeowner did it himself, I say, at least he tried. You can't beat that if you're just trying for the first time. Trying and messing it up beats not trying and say I can't do it any day. Anyhow, guys, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching, and as usual, we'll see you on the next one. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching, and I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching, and from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.